Hi, I'm April. This is Kai, my Derby and Parakeet. He's about five months old. My main issues with him is he's still a baby, but he's very nervous. I'd like to really just work on him getting more comfortable with hands, with people in general. Um, mainly just getting him to step up when I need him to step up without trying to bite my fingers. That's about it. <laughs>
I didn't explain it no, clear enough. No, so I'm clicking for the behavior of him turning versus touching the stick. I'm using okay. the stick to get the turn. And then I'm continuing the momentum of everything going this way so that it's more likely for him to follow through okay. all the way around. Because a lot of the times people will ask for a spin and they'll be like, okay, cool, I got halfway, and they unwind the bird. And they oh, have all the okay. in here. Whereas here, I'm trying to be like, and continue to make it as like okay. comfortable as possible for him. Good job. Do we want to pass it off? Yeah, yet? pass it off there. Okay, let's pass it off to you. Since we got him over his hurdle. He's looking at you like, hey! Where did you go? Okay, so. It's so nice enough high behind him. And wiggle a little bit to get his tension. Wiggle a little. Keep going. There we go. Nice. And just wait for him to be done. Yeah, I can see he's sticking that was great. his tongue. He definitely tells you when he's ready, so. Oh, yeah. He said he, he really likes these things. <laughs> yeah. Keep going. Perfect. Are you clicking or is she? She's clicking. Nice. Okay. I got nothing. Nice. So on this one, because you have so much momentum, when you get him to turn and then you go the rest of the way around, just like have this completely out of the... So wow. it's, instead of going here, because you're going like right back in front of him, just around. Can you, you show her what one. you mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm one tree. These are awesome sizes. Oh, so we're just there already. Just okay. It's a spin now. So now he's just <laughs> now he's getting it. Okay. He's fast. <laughs> Go. Yes. Perfect. What a cool species. I like this guy. <laughs> he, he loves these treats. <laughs> Once I found him, I was like, all right, that's, that's the one. <laughs> the bird trick story of our life is never trust what they say. Can you try this next <laughs> one with just your finger and not the target stick? Just stick your finger out. Do I still use follow. the... Oh, 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 click. Oh. <laughs> Do I that still use awesome. the uh, clicker? Yes, still use the clicker. Okay. So you would just hold it and you'd be like, around. There we go. Yeah. Oh, you dropped it. There you go. Good job. Sweet. Should give him a break. That was a good one to end on. Yeah. Keep in mind, like in the wild, they communicate with little flicks of the, uh, you know, of their eye flashing or their three feathers going up. Like there's subtle communication in the wild is is just that it's super subtle so when our body language changes they read that as like oh crap what's coming and so we need to have that same intention that we do in the training session as we do when we put them away because keep in mind every interaction is a training session so if you want to see a good step up treat it as a trick always now in the future you may not need to always click and treat for every step up but you may want to once in a while to clean it up and remind them hey it's a trick because they don't why would they want to step on a human nothing in their evolution development has ever made them want to be on humans and except for what we're conditioning them through now those were awesome yeah those are great it's critical during a training session where you have lots of breakthroughs to end on the high note and typically when we experience this whether it's in a master class or even with our own birds when we hear the little voice inside of our head that says that was perfect let's do one more that was the one more. We need to stop there because we want to make sure that we end on a super successful note that leaves anticipation for the bird wanting to do more the next time that you train. And as you can tell, because Dave was the only was the one that called that session, um, I think myself, April, and Kai, the bird, we all wanted to keep going because we just had this crazy, amazing momentum. We were having these breakthrough moments, and he was so receptive to training that... I think I was on a high note of just like, yes, we can keep going. And I think we all kind of felt that, which is why Dave's like, because how Let's often have it. we tested this theory, right? Like no, we we'll have. be in the batting cage, we're flying the birds. And I was like, that was great. Let's end there. Okay. But what if we had decided let's do one more? It's like 99% of the time it's a fail. Yeah. And so we really learned to trust that inner voice and, uh, and having that high success, that huge breakthrough has definitely become the trigger for us to be like. <laughs> when you right. don't want to stop. Yeah. Stop. <laughs>
But as he gets older, there's less patience for that. And if he's ready to work, you gotta work him. Awesome. The other thing I was trying to do with from watching your videos is put my finger or my thumb on his foot when I do let him step up. Okay. Will he do a short hop to you there? I've been trying. Okay, so so hear me out before you do it. Do a spin, click, and then offer your hand at a little distance for him to jump to your hand to get the tree. A okay, short distance. How do I, no, Want to click? I'll click. Yeah, I, yeah. I have to click. So Does I that make that concept make sense? Yeah. You'll need to hold it like four to six inches away. So he's just going to hop. Because look, look, look at that anticipation. Yeah, he is really good. So let's take advantage of that. So do a little spin. And make him pop your finger for the tree. Show the tree. A little closer. <laughs> yeah, he's just, the tree. That's okay. She just pull her hand. Yeah. <laughs> so this time, yeah. just hold your hand a little lower and see if you can make him uh, hop like to here for the tree. Okay. He may or may not. We'll see. I'm gonna move real quick. So there's a sweet spot in getting him to turn around. That's right in that area. Yeah, go go go. Ah. I think he's gonna. He has to poop. He looks like he wants to try to go around me to get the tree. So lower your left hand so the trees aren't so exposed. Or like he's looking at it right there, right? He's more interested in your left hand. Mm -hmm. So there's a spot that's right here to get him to turn and then you continue it. Does that make sense? Okay. So instead of in the front, it's here and then it continues. There's okay, like so just spot start behind him. him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right there. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. It's almost like I'm going to touch your back. Ugh. He really looks, he's like, I know this. All right, so we're failing. So what do I say? We start. <laughs> Whenever, and so Take now, a step back. Yeah. So actually, here. So this one, you can do it like here. Okay. Yep. Okay. So move your hand down the. Exactly. So go ahead. Soft retreat. Yep. And now choke down the stick a little further. Yep. Same thing. Now sneak it into your back pocket if you have one, or off to Jamie. Don't. Or something. <laughs> yeah. Good. Awesome. Good. I'm still eating. Gosh, how do you explain it? I, it's, I like. It's I like, see it, and it's like. <laughs> I'm not clicking that you can treat it just because you wandered on it. And you're trying to get a hop still? I thought we'd get a little more momentum. So let's go back to where there's like this much of the stick showing. Okay. You can stick a few times. Well, do we want it? Are we trying to get a hop still? You want a hop. After. I wonder if we should treat momentum. So I think because April saw such quick results with getting her bird to turn its back on us and learn the spin and so quickly that she immediately jumped to the next goal, which was a little bit of flight. And so we're working on this and we're really trying to entice him to make this flight with targeting and all the ways. And eventually I work with him. So the first thing I do is just work on some basic step ups and allowing the bird to step back off of me as soon as he wants to. So as you can see, he's pretty eager to step right back off of me pretty early on, but then he also becomes more eager to step onto me and he even wants to stay on this rep. So that's pretty cool to see that happen so quickly. So all I'm trying to establish is some sort of relationship. I don't reward here because he used his beak to pull my hand close and then step onto it and I don't want him using his beak. So I change my posturing a little bit to hopefully change his posturing. But as you can see, he just goes for me and he's getting a little aggressive and frustrated because he really doesn't want my hand at a certain distance that requires more effort from him. So this is a pretty big step for him to take versus just an easy step up where I have my hand really close. So it's kind of frustrating him that I'm asking this. So as you can see, I just go back to these big step ups trying to get consistent, but then I'm thinking about it and I decide to change my game plan. I almost wonder if he's a little bit anxious to jump. Actually, maybe I should have him jump back. That's a good I idea. Think we'll have that really good. He would definitely jump okay. back to the perch. Okay, that's good. Well, there's how you get your flight training started. 
I'll click for the return. So why don't you give him the treat on the way back this time? Okay. He spins. <laughs> She could probably do that. Yeah. So let's have you do that. Okay. So it's just a step up and a turn around. He flies back and you give him the treat on the perch. So then, uh, do you want to just push and see if we can get a hop? I mean, sometimes he does seem really close. So hold your hand far enough away that he can't pull it. Can't pull it. You could even, a little higher. You could even show him the treats closer. What I really want to point out here is how important it is to work with what the bird is currently giving you. So we were unlikely to get a flight to me, but we were very likely to get a flight from me since this bird doesn't know me. And so we decided to just work with what the bird was willing to offer when it came to flight training. I feel like so close to jumping to her. She could try extending it this time. You didn't give him a treat. Oh. Oh, well, let's try it. Hold it a foot away, see if he'll jump to you. Hold my hand? Yeah. <laughs> he does it. He does it. <laughs> Give me the hand. <laughs> so hold your hand far enough away that he can't pull it. Can't pull it. And you could even, you could even show him the treats closer. Yeah, you could have an open hand to show him the treats. Come on. Come on, Jimmy. You can do it. And then when I rolled him around, he's more interested. Yeah. Go, go, go. Come on. So the interesting thing is when we gave Kai a break and we left him out on top of his carrier, we thought, okay, he's just going to take a break. It's all going to be good. We're going to work with Marvin, the green wing macaw, who also came to this class, and we were working on flight training in the background. And Kai suddenly looked so interested in flying that I kept telling April, hey, just offer your hand, just be there in case he looks like he might want to possibly fly to you, like give him the opportunity to do that. He would put his wings out a little bit, seem kind of anxious, like he was really going to fly. There were points where he would even flap his wings. He would hold them further away from his body. We just thought, oh my gosh, he's going to fly. And I think a lot of that was created by the dynamic of him watching Marvin the Green Wing constantly recalling to his owner. So then this happens and I have sped this footage up for you guys, but you can see how excited Kai is about the idea of flying and we're trying everything to entice him. We're offering him a handful of his favorite treats. We're doing a really short offering of a flight so it wouldn't take a lot of effort. We're changing hand positions. We're offering targeting, doing so many things. And then this happens. He's got another one in him, I think. Yeah, that was better. Well, that's a better one to end on. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> you treat him for that? Yeah. I'm going to work on socializing him, getting him better with my kids, my boyfriend, making our training sessions a little bit better, uh, calmer, getting a better stand, obviously. I think it's going to be a main thing. For the most part, probably still just watching up on videos, reading your guys' stuff, and really, with the food conversion, that's still my main goal. I'm so done. Uh, hi. <laughs> If you guys enjoyed this video or got anything out of it, uh, please do us a huge favor. Like this video, comment on this video, or share this video. All those things really help us help you to save parrots one person at a time. You could also subscribe. That'd be cool. There's that. <laughs>